I want to discuss a few more rules that we'll see when, we'll, when we are dealing with exponents. The first one here, negative exponents. What happens if you have something like an a raised to the negative n? If you have a particular number raised to a value of a, ne a negative value, a negative exponent, what you're going to do is take that whole thing, whatever is being raised to that negative exponent, and to make it positive, you just drop it to the other side of the fraction. So notice when we write a to the negative n, we don't have a denominator. We could, if we wanted to, we could say, you know, this is um, over 1, right? We could just write this over 1 if we wanted to. Anything divided by 1 is itself. So to make this a positive exponent, all we do is we take whatever is being raised, we drop this whole expression, the whole thing, to the other side of the fraction, like we did here, and we see that it is now a positive exponent. The most common mistake with negative exponents is thinking that a negative exponent changes the entire expression into a negative number. A lot of people think this. A lot of people think that a to the negative n we can write as negative a to the n. And this is not true. You do not want to do this. It does not change the value of the sign. What it does do is drops the entire expression to the other side of the fraction. So let's suppose we had 1 over a to the negative n. What if we have the expression in the denominator? Well, we want to make it positive. We never want to deal with negative exponents. So what we do is we bring it to the other side. So we select anything that has a negative exponent, which this does and we move it to the other side of the fraction. So we're going to have a to the n all over 1. Right? So let me see if I can, yeah, that's not so good. Let's write that as just a to the n. That's all it is. It's moved to the other side of the fraction. And once you do that, once you pick up that expression and move it to the other side, the exponent changes sign. It goes from a positive number to a negative number. Let's look at another example, or another rule. If we had, let's say, a power of a product, what that's saying is a, b, we have two things that are being multiplied inside of parentheses, and we're raising that to a power of n. But what that's telling you to do is really what we can do is distribute this n to both of these. This is the same as a to the n times b to the n. Really, that's all we're doing. We're just kind of distributing this exponent. Both of these two terms here, these factors of this product, will receive a new exponent of n. So an example, if we had, let's say, x squared, y, that whole thing raised to the third power. Well, we have a product, x squared, y. The whole thing's being raised to the third power. We can distribute, we can raise both of these factors to a power of 3. So this is going to be x squared. That whole thing is going to be raised to a power of 3. And y to the third, y is also going to be raised to a power of 3. And then to simplify this, when you raise a power to a power, we don't add these. Remember, you only multiply the exponents when you're raising a power to a power. So this is going to be x to the 2 times 3, which is 6, y to the third. So the power of a product rule allows us to, if we have two things that are being multiplied and that whole quantity is being raised to a power, we can distribute that exponent to both of those factors. The same thing can be done with the power of a quotient. So if we had A over B, a quotient, you know, a ratio, two integers, whatever it may be, two things being divided, a fraction, and that whole thing is being raised to a power. Well, what we can do is, just like we did with the power of a product, we can distribute that exponent to both of those terms. A real quick example, if you had two, that's not good, if you had, let's say, two thirds raised to the third power, well, what we can do is distribute that three, that exponent of three, to both of those 
two terms. So our numerators being raised to a power of 3, we get 8. Our denominators raised to a power, oh, that should say 3. To a 3, we get 27. And that's what we get. When you raise a quotient to a, a power, you can distribute that exponent to both of those. And then finally, the flip rule. That's obviously kind of my own little term for this. What I mean by the flip rule, if you have a quotient, let's say a over b, and it's being raised to a negative exponent. Well, if we put these two rules together, let me give you what happens here. This is the same thing as saying b over a. We can flip what's inside and make the exponent positive. When you have a fraction being raised, that whole fraction is being raised to a negative exponent, you can make that exponent positive if you flip what's inside. In other words, you invert the numerator and denominator. The numerator is now the denominator, and the denominator is now the new numerator. A quick proof of this. Well, if you were to use the rules we just talked about up here, the power of a quotient says we can distribute both of these. Right? So the power of a quotient... Let me write this in red. If we were to prove this, we could write this as a to the negative n all over b to the negative n. We never want to have negative exponents. So to change a to the negative n into a positive exponent, we have to flip it to the denominator. And to change b to the negative n into a positive exponent, we have to bring it up to the numerator. So these are going to be flipped. We'll have b to the n over a to the n which we know is you know, we, is, we can write this as b over a. We can kind of take that exponent out, kind of like we did up here where we distributed. Actually, I guess I was down here. We distributed this n to both these terms. We can go backwards and take out the exponent and bring it up top. So this is another rule. Let's use all of these rules to go over some properties, go over some examples.